Hello, this is an assessment of a Challon upright piano made in 1937. The client's kindly allowed me to video this in his house and to put it on the internet. I've been hoping to do one of these for a long time because there's lots of Challon pianos in the UK and uh, I'm hoping this might be helpful to somebody. This is a, a 1937 Challon, so you can see by the casework it's, I don't know if you call that late art deco, but typical Challon with a kind of sloping bottom panel. Um, and uh, they've got something they call here uh, a vibration detector casework lift top to play uh, basically you can lift the top and there's a stay here to hold the top up and Challen is certainly a very thoughtful and inventive firm and uh, respected and one of the main English piano makers now it doesn't have ivory keys, 88 keys, 85 sorry, instead of 88, and sold by Rushworth and Draper, um, who were very respected piano dealers in, in Liverpool. Now thankfully we have got the original receipt here from Rush, Rushworth and Draper, um, and there's the original uh, owner of the piano, who bought it new, I said 1937, 1942 he bought it, and that wasn't unusual for a large piano dealer to have pianos for that long so I'm pretty certain he would have bought it new um, and there's the details of the piano the price of the piano at the time um, that's beautiful isn't it I love the way they did this stamp and uh, so that's the original receipt there very good condition receipt too actually I've just noticed something which you may have noticed there 2nd of December 1938 so that's extremely interesting too there's the sale date so presumably that was the official new date of the uh, sorry when the penny was originally made though the serial number says to us it's 1937. Inside the piano is a hydrosil humidifying bar the idea is you put this in the bath fill it with water it goes inside the piano and stops it drying out particularly so the tuning pans don't get loose from my experience the, the problem with this is it does get f forgotten about um, so uh, although you might fill it up at the beginning enthusiastically it tends to get forgotten about as it's inside the piano so really it doesn't f perform the kind of function it's supposed to there's some wonderful design features on this piano like this long music desk here which goes right the length of the piano so that's well thought out and as he was an organist that was really useful so apparently you'd have two or three of these across this is a, a seasonal one and uh, it stretches like half the music desk a, sh a small a, sh a shorter music desk wouldn't be so convenient that's a typical uh, challenge lo logo on the pianos and uh, and the badge here we looked at earlier um I don't know if you call that badge coat of arms isn't it really by appointment to yes i believe i believe that also they supplied pianos to the bbc so uh, quite a respected firm really and made small pianos that was one of their of course in the 30s it, small piano was much more commonly made there was plenty of big pianos larger pianos around which tended to be restored i love the rushworth and draper key here a particularly decorative piano key I'm not sure if the other side's the same let's have a look it is similar isn't it that uh, beautiful key that I've checked underneath the keys there's no signs of moth which is encouraging because they love to attack these key felts um, unless they were obviously it is possible before that there was if the piano's been restored and they've got I think this may actually be new felts so I'll show you why later on I think that might be the case um, but here we have an interesting uh, that's that's I think that's Herberger Brooks's own order number there and the date there 29 and that looks like 30 something um, so that helps us to date the piano but the serial number is actually found in the very back if you take the action out you can read it there it is 62558 something that really surprised me is this this design of capstan uh, which is like a screw and it's got a slot in there I would have thought that might damage the felt above because uh, obviously that's uh, engaging in the felt above it uh, with a slot in it like that. N normally capstans have an adjuster on the side and they're slightly taller. This is a very short capstan or you may have a screw underneath the felt. That's another way that they did it. Now if we look at the hammers we can see how much wear there is and uh, I don't know if you can see the end of the hammers here um, particularly here where it's played the most obviously the mid treble you can see quite a lot of indentation um, and have been refaced at some stage but there's still lots of indentation and that means the too much surface area of the hammer hitting the string I did try refacing one here to see what the difference it's not fully refaced just an idea of getting the difference in tone 
a bit clearer. If you change these hammers, it would totally alter the tone. Um, I suspect you could probably reface them. Well, there has been quite quite a lot. Replacing them would improve the tone, but you'd have to reweigh the whole action. Although that is an op option, obviously, um, and uh, I think it would improve the piano quite considerably if they were replaced. But uh, let's perhaps reface them, see what kind of tone you get after that. That's the kind of decision you have to make. It will definitely be very good to replace them. The, the felt's a bit on the hard side, um, and uh, so as you can tell, I'm not quite sure about that. It's always a difficult decision to make: re replace them or reface them. Replacing them would certainly be excellent. You can put modern, new hammers on; that would be very nice. And there's another aspect we'll look at in a minute. Just um, that damper there, being the last one in the row doesn't dampen incredibly well and the spring is a bit weak so if we strengthen that spring I think that would help the rest of the damping is quite good not perfect it's the right hand string that it tends not to be damping so you could make it so that the left hand goes in a bit further and that'll damp better that's something we often do so I'm going a bit fast because I don't want to spend too long there's so much to say about this piano the, the, I, it's definitely been worked on before because there's no slack in the keys or very very little and if it's been played that much then it's been regulated and that's what made me think about the felts at the front because uh, as it is at the moment the key dip is far too low so basically the hammer is setting off far too far away from the string as you can see it's about should be sort of two three millimeters maximum uh, to get really nice touch otherwise you can't place quietly and sensitively and uh, it's more like I would say a centimeter or even more than that away from the string uh, and it's then setting off letting off and that's because the key won't let it get any further um, if, if you did try to adjust the set off here the let off round there we've done so nice on other videos the screw here uh, then you would find it double hit so that doesn't work and it's because the key's not going down far enough now if we look at it with the key deck measurer that would be ideal 11 or even if you wanted it 10 millimeters it's still not going down that far as you can see there's plenty of gap uh, obviously that should be touching the key next to it to be 10 millimeters and it's not touching it at all so let's go put the 11 which i'd like to set it at so two millimeters more than it is at least you want to go down at least two millimeters more and there's no scope to do that with this felt because there's no uh, there's no card underneath it sometimes this card or usually is that you can take out and that increases the key dip so that felt needs to be thinner and make it maybe three millimeters would be that's probably about four four and a half something like that um, maybe even two millimeter cut felt as thin as you can get it and then put card underneath that so you can then adjust it so if you took the, I've just taken the felt out completely on middle C and it does nearly reach so that would be ideal really um, so in fact actually it's not going all the way down I think it's uh, it's not going all the way down so that would be necessary to do so increase the key dip the hammer blow is correct so we don't need to change that and the sharps also as you can see there's plenty of uh, they need to go down by a couple of millimeters that, that's two millimeters there would is the height it would normally be above the key um, and if we look just turn that round we can see that the sharps actually could be slightly taller as well could be slightly higher up um, and that's the standard is 12 height 12, 12 from the key there so that would be uh, another possibility now you probably noticed the piano is out of tune but oddly enough it's actually slightly above concert pitch throughout the whole piano and it's been stored for 16 years so and not been tuned since that's not what you normally would expect to find after storing for 16 years normally it would have dropped in pitch it's partly because it's a well constructed piano um, and it's always been kept in a good environment but not to drop in pitch is unusual so in part for in increasing the key dip to get a better touch um, the pedal is not lifting the dampers off enough so uh, we need to increase that and that's a very simple adjustment to do 
So that's simply a matter of turning this screw above the, the pedals and uh, that's so commonly needed to be done. So if you've got a piano and you're watching this, uh, your dampers aren't lifting enough, that's an adjustment you could make. But don't overdo it because the dampers may lift too early. So if you overdo it, the dampers are lifting off too early and we can hear them not damping properly. Now, in actual fact, the maximum we can get it lifting without the dampers lifting off too early is, is up to there. So I'd like to probably regulate the bottom dampers slightly. If we look at them, they're coming off a bit earlier than the, than the higher ones. So they should really come off last, if anything, or at the same time as. Now, you may have noticed the casters are far too high. They're obviously being put on to shift around in a, an institution, though the client's not sure why they were put on, really, except... Uh, it does make the pedals too high and you can see actually there's some wear at the end of the pedal here um, and strangely enough they, I think because the pedal slopes so much it's actually not uh, too uncomfortable um, normally if pedals are that high they're very uncomfortable to use this is very loose as well and he's tightening up um, but uh, ideally you'd want to take those off but having said that the legroom is not that great so if you took them off you won't have much legroom even with them with them on now the legroom is about 59 so 60 61 will be normal legroom um, so you might want to keep the casters on just to keep the legroom uh, high enough I'm trying to get some priority order here um, see what works more important so increasing the key dip um, and regulating the let off increasing the pedal movement we do need to adjust the dampers as well because they aren't even enough to get much increase on that and the most important here as well is the down weight if you're going to practice on a piano like this then it's too light and too light in the middle here if you look at the that 36 should be more like 50 or 48 uh, 47 to 52 and so that's far too light really if you want to um, if you want to practice the piano your fingers won't get strengthened enough if you're taking exams but for an organist and uh, he might be happy with that because some organs vary quite a bit in the terms of their uh, their touch and uh, obviously not so important um, but uh, if you are practicing the piano you need even touch throughout because it's a uh, touch sensitive and really important to get it right so that's um that's uh, important job to do if you you want to practice the piano though if you just want to enjoy it and you don't mind a light touch it's probably best to try and even it out we do if we lubricated the uh, balance rail that's going to even out these ones there uh, i think and we'll probably get certainly better and they could obviously reweight the keyboard but that's a lot of work there's a 36 gram weight put on two of the lighter keys that's one and this sharp here and it's going down there so that's even lighter possibly than 36 grams so I'm just going to fine tune the piano. Before I do, I just want to lubricate the pressure bar here. Now this is a, any, most lubricants will work. This is actually WD-40. You wouldn't use WD-40 on hinges on the piano, but here you, your idea is to lubricate at the pressure point. So this is the place that's most important to lubricate. Then take, the, take them down and then up. In this case, we're not pitch raising. So um, I will take down the ones we have to, we have to raise up slightly as one or two slightly flat ones. But just lubricating here um, you're using a paintbrush is a good idea um, if you if you're in the trade and have got a better idea please do let us know I'm trying to learn all the time uh, that'd be really useful to know um, but to need a bit more lubricant on the paintbrush now so I fine-tuned the piano now it was a concert pitch as I mentioned earlier quite surprisingly um, and it's a very interesting piano altogether it has a nice cheerful sound. I would say that Challen has a cheerful sound. Now, quite a beautiful bass really. So for the size of the piano, it's very well designed. Now, the main limitations, it seems to me, we couldn't actually adjust the pedal lift in the end because the that whole, all the dampers need adjusting. And in fact, the piano really does need a general regulation. Now I've been tuning it. You always learn a lot more when you tune a piano. But the key dip, that really does need to be lower or to go down further. Two millimetres would, would be fine and then the hammers can get closer to the string and more control. At the moment 
you just sense there's a lack of control. The hammers are always double hitting as well. Now if you wanted to learn on the piano, the action is far too light really, so that you wouldn't develop your muscles enough to, to then go and play exams on a grand piano. So I wouldn't recommend it for that, but just for enjoyment, you might be quite happy with the light touch. It can be made uh, heavier, obviously. Changing the hammers would make the... We could put heavier hammers on straight away, and it would make the tone better to change the hammers. But it would be an extremely long job to get it right. So if you've got a Challen upright piano, it's a, it's a high quality piano really, or certainly medium quality, and a very respected maker piano, well made, usually quite stable. I love the long music desk here, it's really useful. Um, nowadays, a lot of people print out music and you can spread it right across. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you very much for listening. Please do comment underneath and uh, especially if you tune a lot of challenge pianos it would be very interesting to hear what your comments are The other thing I mentioned is the pedals are really very high, but in fact they're not they're not uncomfortable because they slope a lot. So that and if you wanted the legroom, as you can see, it's limited. So quite good to have the pedals high.